to Birthing Purpose Testimonies. I wanted to bring a special lady before you today. She is Keisha Wilkins. She is the founder of Visionary Entertainment, which under her entertainment company, she is a booking agent. Um, she does promotions, VIPs, mm -hmm. collaborations, um, and more. A and lot more. A lot more. <laughs> so I wanted to bring her story to you today. This is a story of how God used a dream to produce a miracle. So thank you for being here, Keisha. Thank and you. Yes. And thank you for being here today. This is amazing. I'm so excited. Okay. Uh, Break off the nerves. I'm so excited <laughs> to be here. I appreciate you. Yes. Yes. You know, everyone, I met Keisha about three years ago. Um, yep. Uh, we have a mutual friend who's in the entertainment industry and he told me, he said, you need to interview Keisha. She has an amazing story. So I was like, okay, hook it up. And I met Keisha and the story was so heavy for me at that time because of all I was going to through. I'm like, I can't take this right now. It was so much. You guys, we stayed on the phone for hours and we just talked about everything and then we just became friends and then it, the interview never got done and here it is three years later. It's time. It's time. It's, 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 it's past time. <laughs> it's past time. <laughs> All right. We're sister friends now. Yes, yes. And I'm I'm in a better place where I can emotionally handle this story. So take us back to the beginning. Okay, to where we want to start. We want to start the reason I was put on medications. We want to start there. Yeah, let's start okay. with the trauma. So, okay, so let's start with this. Okay, my name is Keisha. I am a single mother. I have three children, three beautiful grown adult children. Um, my baby boy is 25. He just graduated from Berkeley. My other son's middle son is 30 and uh, he graduated from UCR. Well, he'll be 31, graduated from UCR. And uh, my daughter is 30, gonna be 32. And she graduated from uh, University of Berkeley. And um, I was, uh, I am a survivor of many things. L let's say, let's start with molestation, abuse, and um, I, you know, kind of am a church girl. So I was raised in the church and um, going through these things. I, as a young girl, I, I learned to brush things under the rug and act like they didn't happen. You know, back in the 70s, that's what we did. Back in the 80s, that's what we did. Well, uh, fast forward to the 90s and early 2000s, um, I was raped, really raped um, by two men that I knew very well, um, knew him from high school, you know, junior high, um, trusted him. And this is after I had my daughter. So um, it was her family. And um, after the rape, um, I was put on medication. Um, I was put on sleeping medication because I was having a hard time sleeping after the assault. Um, they messed me up pretty bad, um, left me pretty bloody. And um, so I had to overcome that and um, started having the nightmare. So doctors started having different surgeries and things because there were some complications that they caused and um, put on medication. Well, this is where um, my true, true story comes in. And this is where God brought in the miracle here. Um, I was put on Ambien CR sleeping medication alongside of other pain medication after I would have multiple surgeries, you know, um, going in, lasering off growths and scar tissue and all that kind of stuff from the assault. Um, I was put on the medication. Um, I was having side effects from the medication my kids would tell me like mom you were up last night and you were sleepwalking you were sleep eating you know eating you know while I was asleep and I didn't remember I'd wake up with like noodles all over my shirt or noodles in my bed and I'd be like 
to my youngest daughter, Kay, or to my daughter, Kayla, you know, like, uh, was somebody in my room eating? Like, uh, somebody in my bed eating? Because I didn't remember. She'd be like, no, mom, you woke me up like three, four o'clock in the morning and told me, get you some cup of noodles. And I'd be like, oh my God, like, what is going on? Like, what's happening? So I'd drop the kids off at school. I'd cry on the way home because, I, I, you know, it's scary not remembering, right? right? Right. And I'm talking like, Lana, seriously, like one night I woke up and um, my kids came in the room, my baby boy and my daughter came in the room and they're telling me that I woke them up like, you know, four o'clock in the morning talking about let's go to Disneyland, got them in the van like we're going to Disneyland. And I was out of it, you know? Mm. So I guess they talked me back into the house, you know, or whatever. But things like that would happen. My daughter would say I fell in the bathroom, you know, and I was just laying on the floor, mm. you know, stuff like that. And I'd be like, what is going on? So mm. I'd take them to school, call my mom. Every time something happened, I call my mom, mom, something's going on with me. What, you know, something must be going on with my medication. Something is not working with my system. Right. You know, she would be like, you know, call the doctors, you know, find out, you know, what's going on, but keep on doing what you're doing. Keep on doing what the doctors tell you to do, Keish, right. whatever. The kids are doing well in school. My kids are straight A students, straight A students. Mm -hmm. I mean, never gotten any problems at school. I wouldn't get calls saying, you know, come up to school for any trouble or anything like that. They were good kids. So um, I would be crying to my mom and she'd just say, do what the doctors tell me to do. I'd call my doctors. They flip a medication, but we never put it with the Ambien CR. They'd flip like my, my muscle relaxer or my pain medicine or anxiety medicine, whatever it was at that time. They flipped that, but never the, the sleeping medicine. Mm. So uh, one particular night, I it was June 1st, 2008. Was my, it was my birthday. Okay. I had just turned, what, 38, and I wasn't feeling well. So I was in the bed, like, for a couple of days, you know, not feeling well at all. So um, on June 3rd, well, June the 2nd, the day after my birthday, I, I didn't eat that whole day. I had went to bed. Well, I was already in bed, but I had went to sleep, you know, was going to sleep. Took my medicine maybe about 11, 11.30 that night. Um, my ex was there. My ex, he he helped me get through the rape. He was a cop. We got together after my rape. So he was a cop. I would have nightmares and stuff like that. I would wake up out of my nightmares fighting him, like beating him up, you know, and or not beating him up, but, you know, like fighting, you know, fighting mm -hmm. like the them off of me. Right. And um, he would just hold me and be like, Keish, you're safe. I'm here. I got you. You're safe. You know, so he helped me get through that, you know he's dealt with a lot of rape cases and stuff like that. So he was able to talk me through it and, you know, hold me and just, you know, soothe me. So this particular night, I took my medicine, like I said, 11, 1130. And I guess I got up like at, at about three o'clock in the morning, you know, like I always did, I guess I got up and somehow, you know, I woke him up and I asked him if he wanted some leftover tacos because I was hungry. Right. And um, being with him, girl, I learned to, like, I would cook all the time. Like, it didn't matter if he was hungry at midnight. I'm going to be up frying some pork chops, making some vegetables, rice, potatoes, whatever he wants. Right, if he right. wakes me up at 4 o'clock in the morning, I'm getting up. I'm making a full course meal. Okay. He wake me up whatever time. It didn't matter. I'm going to okay. cook. Right. right, right. So that's how I was at that time. I just was a pleaser, you know? Right. So I got up and I was hungry this time. So I'm like, babe, you want something to eat? You know, he's like, yeah, you know, make me some leftovers. He had made dinner that night. He made dinner that night, but I didn't eat. He made dinner for him and the kids because mm -hmm. I wasn't feeling well. So I was like, I'm gonna go make some leftover tacos. So somehow I got downstairs. I was still out of it. Well, with Ambien CR, it's a sleeping med medicine and it's time release. Mm -hmm. So it kind of skeets in your system and it skeets out well I guess when I'm waking up it's skeeting out of your system so you're kind of you know here coherent but not coherent okay so I somehow got downstairs I remember I was kind of woozy a little got downstairs got everything out of the refrigerator I don't know if I had a pan or a pot I don't remember put oil in there 
oil must have got really hot. And me knowing me, I know I had a fork there because you always have a fork when you put in a shell in the oil. Yeah. So somehow, I, I guess that shell must have got burnt. I walked over to the trash can, flipped that shell in the trash can. I guess some oil must have dripped off the shell, dripped off the shell. On the way back, I slipped on some oil on the floor. I had a nighty, gray nighty on, you know, my, one of my cute nighties girl, silk, you know, and um, I slipped, hit that panhandle because the panhandle was off. This is where I kind of woke up. This is where I woke up. I, I slip, hit that panhandle. I wake up and I'm falling to the floor. The pan's coming towards me. The oil hits my face in like, you know, all of this. And I put my hand up. That's why I'm grafted on this right arm. But I put my hand up and I hit the pan down as I'm falling. And um, girl, the only thing I remember from there is this bright light, like, Bright like that star that's right behind you or on the side of you. Mm -hmm. Bright light, like really, really bright light. And it was a feeling of go back, right? Just the feeling of just the feeling of go back. And I look back, girl, why I see them working on me? Mm -hmm. so I've seen them working on me. You had died. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I've seen them working on me. And I'm like laying in front of my big screen TV and like the doorway. And I see them like working on me. My ex said that my gray nighty, it had was like saran wrap, like clear. But I just, rem I don't remember the gray nighty anymore. I, I know that they were working on me and they must have wrapped me with a, a sheet, you know, a clean sheet or whatever. Right. Because that's what I think, you know? So, um, so from there, I guess, you know, um, I was out. Next thing I knew, I woke up in the hospital and um you know they're working on me or whatever have you but right. um so i talked to my ex about it you know right. just recently the last few years ago i talked to my i finally you know was able to talk to some of the people that were around during that time my doc, daughter would never talk about it she never wanted to talk about it she's the one that had to call 911 him and her called 911 so she doesn't want to talk about it right. but i asked my ex like what happened so, cause I wanted to confirm that what I seen is what I seen too, you know? So when I asked him, and this is like not even a year ago, I asked him, I'm like, you know, what happened that night? You know, like, what do you remember? He told me, I asked him if he was hungry. I went downstairs. He was still asleep. He said that him and my daughter heard a boom, bam, you know, mm -hmm. downstairs. They came running downstairs. My daughter ran down first. He came running after her. And um, they said I was laying on the kitchen floor, just out of it. He said he picked me up and he um, walked, um, carried me to the couch. Mm -hmm. And he said, my daughter was asking him like, you know, should I call 911, you know? And he was like, no, no, you know, hold on. You know, he, they seen my face was like glistening, you know, but he thought it was wet. So he said, throw me a towel to her. She throw him a towel, she, he wipes my face. That's probably what saved my face a little bit. So um, after he wipes my face, he looks down at my arm and it was bubbling. Mm -hmm. That's when he was like, call 911, you know? So the ambulance came and paramedics, whatever have you. I guess they sent one ambulance first and a second paramedics got called out. Like, I guess the, the head guy, you know, of the fire department got called out. And he was like, you know, where are you taking her? And they were like, we're taking her to St. Mary's, which is in Apple Valley, California, it's like a local hospital. And he was like, no, she's not going to make it. You know, we need to get her to the burn unit like stat. We need a, a helicopter to get here. Wow. So they had me airlifted to the Air, Arrowhead burn unit. Yeah. Right. And uh, that's what happened. And you needed to ask all these questions because you were trying to go through your healing process. Yeah, because, you know, after you get burned like that, okay, so I'm in the burn unit, and, and um, you know, I knew that it was bad because I was bandaged like a mummy, right? right? I knew it was bad. It just didn't click that my face was bad. It, for some reason, it clicked. There's no mirrors in the burn unit, right? Mm -hmm. So, um when I'm in the burn unit, you know, I'm asking everybody for mirrors and things like that, you know, 
and um and you know uh nobody would give me one so my parents went i spent a month in that burn unit well when it was time for me to be released my parents were like we need to let her see you know what she looks like because we're not going to be able to handle it before prior to getting burned i used to do print work back when i was younger i did some pageants i was little miss west giving a first runner-up and miss congeniality and did things with the community and stuff so the looks were meant a lot to me, you know? So um, I didn't know it was that bad, you know? So I didn't know I need any healing. I'm thinking I'm me, you know? I'm, I'm dealing with everybody normally, you know? So this particular day, my dad's like, Keish, if you're so big and bad, you know, get your walker. I guess they had told everybody, don't give her a mirror up until this point. So he's like, if you're so big and bad, get your walker, roll on down the hallway. Cause I had to, you know, learn how to walk again. Right. I had to get my vision back. I mean, my face, I look like totally Freddy Krueger, you guys. Right. So, you know, um, he's like, you know, get your walker, stroll on down the hallway. You can see your reflection in fire extinguisher. Well, when I see my reflection in the fire extinguisher, because I'm going to go down there. Mm -hmm. So I got my walker, went down there. I see my reflection. Girl, we talking Freddy Krueger. For real, for real. Mm. I was done. I, I I screamed, I hollered, I cussed everybody out. And the doctor said that's it. Like you, your face well, will pretty much be remain like that. Forever. Yeah, the next day. Well, the see the thing is that 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 night I didn't I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't dealing with anybody. I was pissed because I felt like everybody lied to me. You know, I look like this, and you guys coming in here like normal. My ex kissing me like normal everybody's acting like normal. I was pissed. So I guess they had to call the doctors out because I wouldn't want to take no medicine. I didn't want, I didn't want to see nobody. So when the doctor came in, yeah, he sat on my bed at the end of my bed. And basically not in these words, but in medical terms, he told me you're going to be disfigured for the rest of your life. And, um, you're going to be scarred. And you know, you're not going to be able to live a regular life, but mm -hmm. in medical terms, you know, right. so that's what I heard him saying, you know, right. but in medical terms, and I'm like, okay, I ain't living then. I guess I'm not going to be living because I'm definitely not going to live like this. So girl, I was done. My aunt was there. So she's like, whoa, you know, so I guess she went home and she prayed. She was like, I'm God, she, Keisha is right. not gonna be here because I was suicidal at that point right. you know so I so they moved me to another room you know basically had me on suicide watch right. and um the next day my aunt comes in and she's like standing with the window behind her and she's like my bed is in front of her she's like he she goes um last night you know after you know I, I left the hospital I went home and I prayed she said I seen your reaction she said um I prayed, prayed, prayed before I went to bed, she said, and um, God showed me in my dream that you're going to be even more beautiful than you were before. So let's and Lana, talk when about she, that. yes, let's talk about how God turned this thing around. Man, yeah. Lana, when she said that, I swear, like the windows behind her, like I said, like a light flashed in behind her, like almost like the sun came out and went back in. Yes. Right at that moment, I had hope. I knew I was going to be okay. At yeah. that moment, I knew. Felt forget like I was. Doctor said. Forget what the doctor oh, said. God yeah, has the last word, last say. Period. Absolutely, I knew. So you know, they released me a couple of days later. I, I got released. I moved back with my parents. You know, me and the kids moved in with my parents. My parents' house has mirrors all over. Like their house looks like a like a like a, uh, I don't know, like a mini mansion. You know, <laughs> got mirrors all all around and just gold and glitters and all this. Yeah. Girl, as soon as I walk through the door, there's a mirror and I'm on the floor. <laughs> just screaming. Right. Right. Awful. 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 Right. And, um, you know, they have to turn my mirror closet doors backwards, all that, cover all the mirrors in the house. I was just done. I really was. Um, at that yeah. point, you know, um, you know, I, I just had to get through all that pain. You know, the nurses were coming out, scraping my skin off every day. 
you know, putting the bandages back on. My mom, she started scraping the skin off on the days they didn't come. You Ooh. know, then we put the bandages back on, put the ointments back on. Yeah, you know, I went through that. Then when it came time when my aunt would come weekly and she would see that my face was cleared, clearing up. So she said when she came this one particular time and my face was cleared enough for her to put ointments on my face. My aunt, she's always been about, you know, the, the um, healing, you know, natural healing and your vitamin E and your cocoa butter and your shea butter. She's, she's very anointed, very, very anointed. And seeing that I, my face was clear enough for me to start putting ointments and things on my face. She's, since I was a little girl, she's been making ointments. She's the one that, you know, boil the water with the pot, put the towel over, you know, steam. She's that aunt, you know? Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, back in the day remedies, you know? So when she's seen that my face was clear enough to put stuff on it, she said she went home because she would come and visit me weekly. She said she went home and she said, oh, God, you told me that her face was going to be more beautiful than before. You said that. So, God, you got to give me the ingredients to put together to bring her back, you know, full, full, fully bring her back. So she said she went to her computer. She looked up one one ingredient. So say like she looked up shea butter. She said then one other ingredient popped up. She said. She looked up that ingredient, then another ingredient popped up. She said, he look up that, another, and another, and another, and another. Just She said, every ingredient she put pop, put in there, another ingredient popped up. She just wrote down all the names. So say like, you know, like I said, vitamin E, shea butter, cocoa butter, just on and on and on, all herbal herbs and things, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she went through to five different health food stores to find all these ingredients because they're not easy to find. She said she went through to all these health food stone, stores, picked up all these ingredients, mixed them all together, mm-hmm. and she said she made a tub of it, and she brought me that tub, Lana. Mm-hmm. Every week, she would bring me a tub of it, right? Mm-hmm. Every day, a couple of times, maybe three, four times a day, because she told me like twice, but I was doing it like three, four times a day. So <laughs> I was, right. and I was mainly determined. I'm going to be beautiful. <laughs> I was mainly focused on my face and my neck because my neck was jacked up. Lana, my eye was melted together like this. All of this, my lips were like this. Like they were all discolored black and pink. And it was awful. Oh my God, it was awful. So all my hair was burnt out, like all of it. It, it, all of it grew back except for this one little spot. But all of it was burnt out. They told me my hair would never grow back. Mm. Girl. Well, you got, you God, was like, God was like, let me show you something. Right. right? Thank so you, my Jesus. aunt, girl, my aunt brought that tub one week, right? She brought it, she brought it, right? Yes. This is like three weeks after I got burned. She brought it, right? So then I started putting it on my face, right? Every time I felt like it was dry, I put it on. Girl, I promise you, June 3rd, 2008, I got burned. September 3rd, 2008. With light makeup, with light makeup, I she came over, put the makeup on. I went to the mirror for the first time I could see myself. Wow. I knew it was gonna be okay. Awesome. I knew. And we got we got the before and after pictures from that. Oh yeah. But, oh, yeah. Um, from so- there, girl, from there, wow. then I was in the newspaper. I went and started speaking at, you know, like my aunt was a principal at Paramount High School at the time. She had been, she's, she's been in the educational ed, education educator for many, many years. Mm-hmm. So she um, had me speaking to the kids about kitchen safety, medication. Awesome. Uh-huh. Wow. So it's like the pain we go through is never wasted because you were able to speak to the students. And mm-hmm. you also um, are in the process of creating a nonprofit called Blessings Through the Fire Outreach Ministries. And you want to open up safe houses to help um, domestic and, violence and, and men and children who have been through domestic violence. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, see, that's a whole nother story. Now, this is another way that God works. Okay. So prior to being raped, I was in an abusive relationship, okay? 
-hmm. police had put him out, you know, I helped him get through some things and then I was able to let him go. Right. Right. Then I, I, you know, I went through the rape and all that got burned. Well, after I get burned, you know, I had moved in with my parents, you know, I left my place, got, got rid of most of my stuff, but I kept one box, even my furniture, I gave away everything. Right. But I kept one box of goodies, you know, little whatnots, you know, some few pictures, you know, and mm -hmm. a few whatnots. Well, yeah. I was going through that. My ex was diabetic. Okay. So when I left him, I had left him on the kidney donor list. I had gotten his shunts put in him, you know, with him, made sure he was on dialysis and all that kind of stuff before I removed myself from the equation. I just wanted to make sure he lived, right? Even right. though he was my abuser, I still, God needed me to do what God wanted me to do, which was make sure that he still lived, right? So I was going through the box and girl, God was like, I have bumped into, found an old phone. God was like, call your ex. Mm. And I was like, okay. I hadn't talked to him in like seven years. So I charged the phone and I get my other phone. I called the number. He answers, Lana. When he answers, he's like, Keish? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, he goes, oh my God, how are you? And I'm like, I'm good. But you know, there's some things going on. You want to know the good or the bad. He tells me, tell me the bad. I tell him I'm a burn survivor. I just got burned mm. a few months back, whatever. Mm. Mm -hmm. So he was distraught. He was like, oh my God. So he hands his phone to his friend, a friend of ours, you know? So he's like this guy named Champ. So Champ's like, Keisha, you know, how are you? And I'm like, I'm good. You know, I just got burned, blah, 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 blah. He's like, oh my God, I need to check on D, you know, see how he's doing. He'll call you back. So five minutes later, I get a call back, right? Mm -hmm. And um, D goes, you know, Keish, you know, anything you need, I got you. Anything the kids need, I got you. He said, but um, he said, I got something to tell you. And I go, what's up? He goes, um, Yusef just killed Michelle. He had just killed my girl and they were just leaving the prison. Mm. And Michelle is, okay, so D is uh, ex, my ex-abuser. He had a best friend named Yusef. Yusef had a girlfriend named Michelle. Mm -hmm. I was D's girlfriend. So we were all four together all the time with Michelle's kids and my kids. We all lived together at one point, you know? So when I, when my ex started abusing me, it took me some about six months to get away. But Yusef was abusing Michelle at the time as well. Mm -hmm. So I got away. I never looked back. You know, I left for seven years and then I called and found out she had just got killed and they were just leaving the prison. Wow. So it was her spirit. You know, it was God wanting me to call to find to out what find happened. Out. Mm -hmm. So that's why you want to honor oh, her, when, Michelle Reed, yeah. with these safe houses. Wow. Yeah. And then talk yeah. a little bit about Ray and Stella Ministries. Okay, so Ray and Stella were actually, they've been in my life my whole life. Ray was my dad's, one of my dad's best friends. They worked at McDonald Douglas together. So um, Ray's been in my life, like I said, he was at the hospital when I was born, you know? So later when I had kids, I was looking for a babysitter that I trust. And Ray and Stella lived in my city. So I called them, they started babysitting for me. They became foster parents. So I, I, I foster parent their foster kids, you know, cause they were older. So right. I was younger. So we kind of became a tribe. They helped right. me with my kids. I helped them with the foster kids. So, you know, when I was at work, they had all five kids. When I got off work, I took all five kids. Right. So we did it together. So they were my safe place when Daryl would get riled up or D would get riled up. I'd take my kids there. I'd go back, deal with him. You know, um, he'd hit me, whatever. I put on makeup, go get my kids and then come back home. Right. You know, act like it didn't happen, you know. So they right. were my safe house. They were your safe mm -hmm. house. So yeah, you want to honor all these special people in your life for being there for you through your hard times. Yes. I am just so happy that God made a way. He restored you. You Girl. are beautiful. You do not look like Freddie Krueger. <laughs> Won't he do God, it? God, yeah. Won't he do it? it? Satan, said, Satan said, oh, we're going to take it away. And God said, oh, I'm going to give it back. Huh? And I'm going to see. But the thing I got from it, Lana, is, you know, um, before I got burned, I was all about this, all about what I look like. 
I didn't want to go out the house out of pocket, you know, heels, you know, I was always dressed to the nines, you know, right. even to drop my kids off at school. Okay. Right. Now, um, I, like I said, after God taking that away, it forced me to look on the inside and wow. fall in love with the inside. Yeah. And then he brought the outside back. You feel me? Yes, I feel you. I so, feel you. <laughs> so, so he was like, look, girl, get it going to with the inside. And then we're going to bring the outside back. Right, right. And that's what happened. Yeah. He had to humble you. Had to humble me. Well, you know what? No, honestly, I've always been humble. Okay. Really? Honestly, I've always been humble. Um, but that stems from being 12 years old. And when I was 12 years old, my uncle knocked my front tooth out. Mm -hmm. So being a 12 year old, getting your front permanent front tooth knocked out, even though I was little Miss Westcovina at the time, that brings on insecurities. So right. I thought I was ugly. I actually, when I was 12 years old, from the age of 12, all the way till in my 40s, I used to literally, if anything happened, I was like, say like a man or a boy would, would um, not like me. Right. Before I go home and think, go to my, my mirror in the, in the room or in the bathroom and be like, you are so ugly to me. Can't you see? You're everything I never hoped for. You're everything I don't need. Oh, baby, you are so ugly to me. So you are saying so an ugly flipped, song to yourself. I flipped the words to you are so beautiful and made it you are so ugly. So every time I would go through anything, any kind of rejection, even in, in getting in trouble with my mom, anything, I always would put that on myself. So I was programming myself to think I was ugly. Mm. Right? And then I get burnt up and then God brings it back. So, so words now- Words are powerful. Words are powerful. You spoke absolutely. that on yourself. Absolutely. But thank God he is a- Word curse breaker. <laughs> Girl, listen, but okay, before I before I launched my company, what I did, I had a breakthrough. Before I launched my company back in 2018, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. After I got um, burned, you know, fallouts with my family, you know, you go through post-traumatic stress disorder and right. all this kind of stuff. I had right. to go through deep therapy, EMDR right. therapy, which is a specialized therapy for post-traumatic stress disorder. And so I had to go through that therapy, deal with all of my past experiences, past traumas, all of it, and understand what I went through, heal from it. And at that point, I had to cry out to God and say, you know what, God, I am sick and tired of being sick and tired and something has got to change. And at that point, Lana, I promised you, I cut off all my hair. I promise you, it was like, I, I looked in the mirror because I was talking to my cousin on the phone and I was telling her, oh, girl, God is telling you, you need to look in the mirror. Your scars are disappearing, April. God is telling me that you is a new. And she was like, I, I'm like, girl, are you looking in the mirror? And God kept on saying it, right? And I'm, and she's like, yeah, I'm looking in the mirror. And I said, God is telling me to tell you to look in the mirror. Are you sure you're looking in the mirror? She was like, yeah, girl. God was telling me to look in the mirror. So I got <laughs> up out of my bed. You were telling her it was for you. Yes. I got up out of the bed and I looked in the mirror and I'm like, wow, your scars are disappearing. I kept on hearing it. Girl, at that point, it was like something overcame me. Like I can see me again. Like not the Freddy Krueger, what I seen when I looked right. in that fire extinguisher. Right. Because I kept on seeing that. Because remember, I dealt with post-traumatic stress disorder. Right. But this time I was actually able to see me, Amen. the real me, and right. love what I was looking at. Amen. Awesome. Nothing but God. Oh, he is amazing. So Wow. I thank you for taking the time to share your testimony. And hopefully it's been an encouragement to other people that God always has the final say. Don't listen to the doctors or anybody else. Just stay Man. close to the cross. Stay close. Stay in prayer. And he do it. Yes. Won't he do it? Yeah. Thank you.